Hello, and welcome back to Linux Talks with TextCare. Have you ever wondered about the origins of the terms we use every day in the world of Linux and IT? Today, we're taking you on a journey through time to uncover some of the stories behind some words we use in our field. Picture this. It's 1991, and a young student at the University of Helsinki named Linus Torvalds is working on a small hobby project. Little did he know, this project would grow into something monumental. Inspired by the Unix operating system, Linus decided to name his creation after himself, blending his name with Unix to form Linux. The operating system, born from curiosity and innovation, would go on to revolutionize the tech world. At the heart of Linux, and any operating system, is the kernel. This core component manages system resources and facilitates communication between hardware and software. The term kernel has roots in Old English world kernel, meaning a seed or core. In computing, the kernel is the core component keeping everything running smoothly and mediating the different computational layers of software and hardware. While the kernel handles the core, there are many background processes working quietly in the system known as demons. In ancient Greek mythology, a demon was the spirit of divine power. Fast forward to the early days of computing at MIT, where programmers working on the compatible time-sharing system, CTSS, adopted the term demon to describe these background processes. These unseen helpers ensure processes run without direct user interaction. And speaking of tasks running smoothly, there's a special daemon designed to handle scheduled tasks called Kron. The name Kron comes from the Greek word Kronos, meaning time. Kron is a time-based job scheduler in Unix-like operating systems, allowing users to automate tasks at specific intervals, much like having a personal assistant that never sleeps. But before Linux became widely adopted, there was another pioneer in the free software movement, the GNU project. In 1983, Richard Stallman, frustrated by the restrictive nature of proprietary software, dreamed of creating a free Unix-like operating system. The GNU project, standing for GNU's not Unix, was his brainchild. This clever recursive acronym marked the beginning of a movement towards free software, paving the way for future projects like Linux. To support the GNU operating system, a user interaction layer called the shell was needed. This is where Bash comes in, created by Brian Fox. Bash, which stands for Born Again Shell, was a pun on Born Shell, the original Unix shell written by Stephen Born. Bash was not just a replacement, but an evolution, bringing enhanced features and functionality to users, making it the cornerstone of the GNU project. Now let's talk about how we keep this system secure and running smoothly, with patches. The term patch comes from the practice of sewing a patch of fabric over a hole in a garment. In turn, this was adopted in the early days of computing, when data punch cards were commoned as a way to patch or cover holes punched in the wrong location. In current computing, patches fix issues or holes in software, much like patches on clothing. And the need for patches often arises from bugs in the system. In 1947, Grace Hopper and her team found an actual MOS causing a malfunction in the Harvard Mark II computer. This was a Valve-based computer, which was room-sized and got very hot, so flying bugs like MOS were immediately attracted. They taped the MOS into the logbook with the note, first actual case of a bug being found. While the term bug predates this event, this quirky story perfectly captures the essence of technical issues. To protect systems from bugs and other threats, we use firewalls, essential for network security. Originally, a firewall was a barrier designed to prevent the spread of fire within a building. In the late 1980s, this term was adopted for a computing world to describe a security system that controls incoming and outgoing network traffic, preventing traffic from spreading into protected network areas. And speaking of protection, we must guard against viruses, a term borrowed from bio in 1983, Frederick Cohen coined the term virus to describe the program that can infect other programs by modifying them to include a copy of itself. This concept highlights the destructive potential of malicious software and the need for robust security measures. But it's not all about threats. Let's talk about the spirit of community and collaboration in the tech world, embodied by Ubuntu. Named after the Southern African philosophy of Ubuntu, which means humanity towards others, the Ubuntu operating system reflects a commitment to community and collaboration. This philosophy reminds us that I am because we are, highlighting the importance of shared success. Ubuntu and many other Linux distributions often use the Apache HTTP server to host websites. Named after the Apache tribe, 
known for their strength and resourcefulness, the Apache HTTP server was also a patchy server, created by patching existing code. This blend of resilience and innovation made Apache a dominant force in the world of web servers. But servers need scripts and programs to run smoothly. And that's where Python comes in, a versatile programming language with an interesting backstory. Guido van Rossum, inspired by the British comedy series Monty Python's Flying Circus, wanted a name that was short, unique and slightly mysterious for his new programming language. Thus, Python was born, bringing flexibility and a comparatively low barrier to entry to programmers worldwide. And at the core of all this programming and data is the humble byte. In 1956, during the design of the IBM Stretch computer, Werner Buchholz coined the term byte to avoid confusion with bit. This deliberate alteration has become fundamental to our understanding of digital data and to measure amounts of data everywhere. From bytes to cookies. This small piece of data plays a big role in our web experience. Imagine a magic cookie, a packet of data exchanged between programs. In 1994, Lou Montulli, a programmer at Netscape, adopted this term for the data sent by a web server to a user's browser. These cookies have since become essential for personalizing web experiences and are often pushed regardless of user choices. Take a cookie. However, not all data exchanges are benign we must be cautious of phishing attempts. The term phishing originated in the 1990s, a clever play on phishing, with the PH borrowed from freaking, an early form of hacking. Just like phishing with bait, phishing involves tricking individuals into revealing sensitive information. Data security is crucial, especially as we move more services to the cloud. Envision a fluffy cloud floating in the sky. In the 1990s, this metaphor was used to represent the internet in network diagrams. The term cloud computing gained popularity in the mid-2000s with services like Amazon Web Services, symbolizing the vast interconnected world of online resources. And while the cloud offers many benefits, we must remain vigilant against threats like Trojan horses. Let's travel back to ancient Greece and the legendary story of the Trojan horse. In computing, a Trojan horse refers to a malicious software that disguises its true intent. Just just as the Greeks used a wooden horse to sneak soldiers into Troy. Similarly, software with apparently benign purposes can carry malicious payloads. And finally, let's explore how ancient history influences modern technology like Bluetooth. Named after Harald Bluetooth, a 10th century Danish king known for uniting Denmark and Norway, this technology was designed to unify various wireless devices. The Bluetooth logo even combines the runes for Harald's initials, blending history with modern innovation. And there you have it, the history behind some commonly used terms in Linux and IT. The technology we use every day is built on a rich tapestry of innovation, creativity and a touch of humor. If you enjoyed this journey through tech history, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon for more content from Techscare. Until next time.